Well, it's been a week, and during that week I've been meditating around Ice-type Pokemon and the Tundra, practicing and learning double entendres for the sake of your entertainment, and to heighten my education, because the cold reality is my pronunciations have you guys freaking out. That aside, I've decided that it is time to rule the Paldea region with some of the coldest Pokemon in existence. But speaking of cold realities, I'm just gonna say it straight. Ice-type Pokemon are the worst type of Pokemon! Before we continue, go ahead and tell me your favorite Ice-type Pokemon in the comments. Ice-type Pokemon are cool and have the ability to pack a punch offensively, but they are infamously known for being frail. There are rarely any bulky Ice-type Pokemon. Not only that, it's really difficult to use Ice-types because they only have one resistance and a whole lot of weaknesses. Despite that, we're ready to take on the cold. We're doing a hardcore Nuzlocke only using Ice-type Pokemon and Pokemon Violet. We're going to complete all of the star bases, all of the Titan Pokemon, and the Elite Four, trying to see if Ice-type Pokemon truly have enough power to defeat the whole entire entire game in a hardcore Nuzlocke. In a Pokemon Nuzlocke, a Pokemon that is fainted is box forever and can no longer be obtained. In the Paldea region, only 18 ice types are available for us to use. Unfortunately, not all of these Pokemon will be useful for us to complete this challenge, but we understand that and we're able to take on the winter storm ahead. You see, storms are inevitable, but the way you guys stormed the like button on the Pokemon Nuzlocke challenge where we could only use pink shiny Pokemon was something I can never anticipate. I asked you guys for 500 likes and you guys got 5,500. Holy, Holy smokes. smokes. And I promise you guys a Pokemon Nuzlocke where we only use shiny Pokemon. And I'm in the works of that. We're almost done with the video. It's probably gonna take until next week for that to come out. So be on the lookout for that video. I haven't forgot. The fact that you guys destroy the like button 10 times over, I kind of feel obligated to give you guys 10 of them. So as of now, I'll try to do 10. It's gonna take a very long time, but eventually we'll get them all. I'm talking to you guys post completing this challenge. And I have to say, this is one of the hardest challenges I've ever done. This is my first time even completing a hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke, choosing ice type Pokemon was probably one of the biggest mistakes I've ever did. Best believe it took way more than one attempt to complete this. This is really practice to make sure I don't lose my shiny Pokemon, but best believe the ride is very rewarding. But that's enough jibber jabber. Let's get into the Pokemon challenge where we can only use ice type Pokemon. And of course, Playing Pokemon Violet, none of these Pokemon right here are ice types at all, so we can't even use them. They don't even turn into ice types. We're met with the task of actually obtaining a Pokemon that is an ice type. We can't even participate in battles until we get an ice type Pokemon. In Pokemon Nuzlocke, we have to abide by the level cap rule. Any Pokemon that goes above this level cap, we're not able to use until that level cap increases. So how are we gonna get an ice type Pokemon that abides by that level cap? In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, a lot of the ice type Pokemon are in a level 40 zone. Just trying to catch Pokemon in there gives us the risk of losing the whole entire run. So my solution was to go to Cordano and look for Eevee. Yes, you see him in the thumbnail, Glaceon. Glaceon isn't the best evolution that we could choose from, but we don't really have a choice here. Don't get me wrong, I like Glaceon. To turn this Eevee into a Glaceon, we're going to have to get an Ice Stone. Fortunately, if we make our way to the Icy Mountains, we can get one. That means we have to make our way to the Icy Mountains with the Eevee in our party and not faint to a single Pokemon. If this Eevee faints on my way to the Icy Mountains to get an Ice Stone, the run's over just like that. Making it there can't be that difficult. All we have to do is make sure that we don't encounter any Pokemon. What? How did we encounter this Cabs kid? Okay, let's run. Oh, it's level 16. It uses Bite. Let's try to run again. We can't get away. He uses Leafage. We survive on one HP and we're able to run. Holy smokes. This is when I came to the realization that it is actually extremely easy to lose our Eevee on the way there. What's the solution? We decide to open up the Pokemart and get some Poke Dolls. Poke Dolls give you the ability to lead any battle no matter what. It doesn't matter what ability they have. If we throw a Poke Doll at the Pokemon, they're completely distracted and we're given the ability to run. You would never think this, but because of this lovely guy right here, we're able to keep the Nuzlocke run alive. Excuse me, sir. Can I hold your hand? What the hell? Get away from me, you weirdo. Sir, I'm only trying to give appreciation. You're the reason why we can continue this video. Fortunately, on this journey, we're gonna have the ability to pick up a lot of items on the way. Oh, I accidentally challenged the freaking trainer. This isn't good. Well, we immediately lose the challenge because we can't use normal type Pokemon. And just to add insult to injury, this Meowth takes me out with a payday. That means we're forced to reset. <laughs> yeah, 
The video just started and we have to restart the run. We start attempt number two. I counter another at level 11 Eevee. Catch it and name it Glacier. I traverse the Great Plains, cross massive bridges, jumped off mountains, even traverse the desert. As long as I made sure to not encounter any Pokemon, I mean, we had the green light. As a fail safe, we had the Poke Dolls. There's a famous saying that you probably have heard before. Curiosity always kills the cat. While in a desert, I saw this chest. I never encountered this while playing Pokemon, not even in my normal playthroughs, but I saw this and I was very intrigued by it. I wanted to see what the heck was inside of this chest and looking at it closely, it was moving. So I ran up to it and when I touched it, nothing happened. I would just stare at it. But then I decided to interact with it and it's a freaking level 20 gimme goal. I immediately try running from the battle. It doesn't let me. Even though we have the Pokemon ability Runaway, which allows us to run away from any battle. I had no choice but to throw all the Pokeballs in my inventory. The Sandstorm was active, actively doing damage to my Eevee as gimme goal tackles me. I get knocked down to 15 HP. I'm panicking. I try running again and it's not working. I throw a great ball at it and I catch it. This isn't an ice type Pokemon, so I can't even use it, but that was the only way we could escape the battle. Ugh, I'm not interacting with anything like this ever again. We almost lost the run because of that. Finally, after a decent amount of time, we make it to the icy mountains. Approaching this rock, here's the ice stone, which allows us to evolve our Eevee to a Glaceon. But finally, Glacier evolves into a Glaceon, and we're able to actually start the challenge. Our Glacier here has a timid nature, which lowers his attack for its speed. Perfect, because Glaceon doesn't have that much physical attack anyways. Right behind this rock, we're able to pick up Snowscape, which in this generation boosts all of Ice type's physical defense. After a decent amount of time adapting to the cold, getting our Glaceon used to his new abilities, we're able to make it all the way back to Cardondo so we can take on Katie. She starts with her Nimble as we send out our Glaceon, immediately terrestrialize into her normal type and use Swift, taking out the Nimble in one shot. Tarantula comes out and we use Swift on it also, almost taking it out, taking a bug bite in the process, then taking her out the very next turn. And finally, Teddy Ursula comes out, terrestrializes into a bug type as we use another Swift. We do about 40% to them as they use Fury Cutter, taking me down to 27 HP as we use another Swift and crit them, winning the first badge. So finally, on our second attempt we managed to get the first gym badge ah the beginning of the game was kind of difficult to get into we managed to shake off all the ice and get a grip on things personally i love spending time with glacier after taking down katie we raised the level cap to level 17 and we're able to take on the next gym brassius the grass type gym leader i don't think it requires a pokemon expert to know that ice is super effective against grass so we immediately tried taking out brassius <laughs> In this hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke, we're doing the whole entire game. If you paid attention, we just skipped to the second gym. <laughs> Which means we have to reset because we did not do the game in the correct order. I'm gonna spare you guys the time and it literally took three extra attempts in order to get a Glaceon and have another shot at the first gym. We easily take it down just like the first time, but actually going through the game in the correct order, we have to go against the Sky Titan. And this Sky Titan is a beast. The level cap only increases by one level. This Sky Titan has the ability to take down our Glaceon easily. We start the battle and send out Glace, our second Glaceon ever. We immediately terrestrialize into a normal type knowing that the Sky Titan has Rock Throw but he decides to use wing attack for some reason. We use Icy Wind, doing a decent chunk of damage and using that Snowball up, lowering its speed. Despite that, the Sky Titan outspeeds me the very next turn and uses Rock Throw, almost taking me out as we use a Terrasilize Boosted Swift to take them down below half. But the next turn, they outspeed me with Rock Throw and take me out. Oh snap, this Sky Titan's gonna be a threat. Like I said in the very beginning of the video, Ice type Pokemon are just really frail. And ultimately we're gonna need more than just this Glaceon to win this battle. On our sixth attempt, we just do what we did last time. Go to Cardano, catch an Eevee that's level 11, aiming them Glacier. And we immediately check their name. Oh, they're Impish, that sucks. I immediately gave up. Restarting the game, we get another Eevee and name them Glaze. And they have a hardy nature. Well, no complaints there. We managed to go to the Icy Mountains and 
can evolve our Eevee to a Glaceon and take on the first gym. We easily destroy her like last time. And yet again, the true challenge begins. For my second attempt on a Sky Titan, I just tried giving myself a Citrus Berry. We immediately Terrasalize into a normal type and use Charm, a move that drops the opponent's attack by two stages. Pick a wing attack and then we Icy Win, dropping their speed. But they're still faster than me. They pluck and we Icy Win again, but they dodge it. Fortunately, we're able to drop their speed again, survive another attack, and take them out with a Swift. Now it's time for the second stage of this Titan battle. We started and oh my goodness, you don't heal. In most Titan battles, you heal after you beat them. But in this one, you don't, which sucks. We tried doing it anyways, but we just lose. Waste die. We have to do this over. All right, so for my eighth attempt, I threw about 15 balls at this Eevee and decided to just kill them. So we have to restart. Finally, on our ninth attempt, we catch an Eevee and I came to the conclusion naming it anything with a G was just bad luck. So I named this Eevee Mr. Ice. And I think my theory was correct because I went to go see its nature and it's modest, which is freaking awesome. Like before we make it to the Ice Mountains, pick up the ice stone, evolve the Glaceon. But on this attempt, I was determined to make this be the final attempt. Nine attempts at the beginning of the game is laughable. And the fact that it took me six hours just to reach this point is insane. On the way here, we managed to pick up some quick balls. This triggered an idea in my brain. Utilizing these quick balls, we're able to catch some strong Pokemon without having the risk of losing the run. Inside of the icy mountains, I decided to sneak up on Sneasels. Catching a wild Pokemon off guard gives you the ability to have a free turn on it. We utilized that to use a quick ball on Sneasel. Before even getting a badge, we managed to catch a level 40 Sneasel. Of course, we can't use this because it's way above the level cap. So we caught a ditto. Oh yeah, you guys know what we're doing. We're going to breed Pokemon. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the way that you breed Pokemon is by getting two Pokemon of the same species and putting them in a picnic together. Waiting after a significant amount of time, you'll get an egg. Yes, it's very weird, but that's how you breed in this game. Now, initially, I was very hesitant about having this be a solution to our problem with the Pokemon not being in a level caps. But to my understanding, in a Pokemon Nuzlocke, you're only able to catch one species of Pokemon. And once that Pokemon faints, you can never use it. Theoretically speaking, if we got this Frigibax and it dies, and then we encounter a Baxcalibur, we cannot use a Baxcalibur because we had a Frigibax that died. There's nothing about us not being able to catch a Pokemon and breed it so it can be under the level cap. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If not, <laughs> this run is definitely invalid. Just like that, we managed to get a level 1 Sneasel before the first badge. We did the same for Frigibax. Now, before even taking on Katie, we have Sneeze the Sneasel and Fridge the Frigibax. We easily take down Katie, and now we're able to take the Open Sky Titan on again. We immediately Terrasalize into a normal type and use charm taking a rock throw but lowering their attack in the process take another rock throw eat a citrus berry icy wind take down half of his health holy crap modest really increases our damage a shit ton and we're able to take out the sky titan the very next turn it's not over yet though it's time for round two we immediately terrestrialize into a normal type again and use charm on the barmadier they use torment on me as we icy winded to drop his speed and use snowscape almost go down but we managed to survive we swap the fridge, knowing that we have plus defense, and use Icy Wind. It dodges it, but the very next turn, whoa my gosh! We almost go down to a wing attack, we survive Eater Citrus Berry, and Arvin takes him down. Finally getting past the first Titan. Yes, it took 9 attempts, and it's very laughable. This is my first hardcore Nuzlocke. Please go easy, Yabi. It seems like the solution all along was just get more Pokemon. I should have did that in the beginning. We managed to not lose anyone. Now, going in the correct order, it's time to take on Brassius. This battle went a lot differently than the first time we did this. Smolov comes out, and we decide to swap to Fridge. We use Dragon Tail on the Smolov, sending Pseudo Wudo out. And this was probably a big mistake on my part. Pseudo Wudo terrestrializes into a grass type and uses Rock Throw, almost taking me out, but we use a Dragon Tail. We decide to swap the Mr. Ice and take a tackle, activating our Citrus Berry, giving us enough confidence to take out the Smaller finally. We're able to outspeed it and use Icy Wind to take it out. <sighs> wow. We almost lost a Pokemon because I was being dumb. First hardcore Nuzlocke for you. This is when the challenge really starts to pick up because now we have to go against Cloth, the Stony Cliff Titan, a rock type. We're required to do it with the level cap of level 18. So we immediately Terrasalize into a normal type and we just spam charm. 
I'm not letting this Pokemon have the chance to take me down. We use Icy Wind and whoa, we do a shit ton of damage. The next turn we're able to avoid the Cloth attack and take them out with an Icy Wind. Wow, I was not expecting it to go that way. Mr. Ice having a normal type terrestrialization is really saving us right now. It's not over yet. You know Titans have two rounds. The next round, we decide to terrestrialize into our normal type and spam Charm again. But they start using Rock Smash, lowering my defense, which is a really big problem. We decide to stay in and use Icy Wind, lowering their speed, then swapping the Sneeze as they use Block on me. Shelter uses Water Gun, dropping them to their Anger Shell, increasing all of their stats and lowering their defense. We're able to outspeed it and take it down with a low kick. And we managed to take down the Rock Titan without losing a single Pokemon despite us only using Ice types. Ice types look a lot more promising than I was anticipating. This raises the level cap to level 21, and we're forced to go against the Dark type Team Star base. Good thing I caught three Pokemon before this because it requires three Pokemon for you to participate. Our Pokemon are really strong right now. Despite that, I was shaking in my boots. Team Star bases are the most annoying thing to go against. And they have this OP car that has so much health and has the ability to knock out your Pokemon easily. We gotta go against Geokomo, his dark type Pokemon. He sends out a Ponyard as we outspeed him and use Snowscape. He uses Metal Claw and we eat it up as we use Swift. I don't know why we're using Swift, but we are. <laughs> we knock them down to half HP as we decide to swap the Sneeze to Sneasel. We take a Metal Claw, oh, that does a lot of damage, but we take them out with a Low Kick the very next turn. The snow is still up. Next, the Star Mobile comes out. They decide the Metal Sound as we Low Kick, taking them down to 40%, but I didn't want to die. So I swap to Fridge and Terrasalize into a Dragon type, trying to get as much damage as possible on this thing. We take a Wicked Torque, eat our Citrus Berry, and Dragon Tail it. It does a decent amount, but it only has half HP. A lot of the Pokemon are frail, they do not have a lot of HP, and we're trying to survive. We use another Dragon Tail, doing another 20% to him, but we're forced to swap back to Sneeze. Wicked Torque is a dark type move, so we're able to resist the move that comes out. We eat our Citrus Berry and Low Kick, and we're able to take out the Star Mobile without losing a single Pokemon. <sighs> raising the level cap to level 24 and giving us the ability to keep on pushing. This challenge just keeps getting more and more difficult. Taking a whole entire turn just to get the snow up is very risky. This is when I decided to go back to the snowy mountains and catch a snow. Of course, we would have to do the process again of breeding it, getting the Pokemon egg. You get the point. After a little bit of time, we were able to get a level one Snover, and we decided to name them Big Snow. Snover has Snow Warning, which means when Snover comes out in battle, it gives all of the ice types on the field a 50% physical boost. That is very useful. And up next, we gotta go against the Electric Gym, so having a Grass type is gonna be pretty useful. <sighs> we made a lot of progress, and I'm surprised we even made it this far into the run. It only took nine attempts, but let's go ahead and take a rest. <laughs> You can't, you can't forget, forget about, about me. me. What the hell? Why are you in my dreams? Well, well because, because, you know, I'm the hardcore, hardcore Pokemon, Pokemon Nuzlocke Ender. And, and until, until you feel confident to be able to beat me over and over again throughout the whole process of the run, you're never gonna, gonna beat, beat this hardcore Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon Nuzlocke, especially with, with shitty ice, ice type Pokemon. Ah! Why are you in my dreams? Ugh, I almost forgot. We gotta go against Nimona. She is a rival. She has an arsenal of strong Pokemon that we constantly have to be able to beat. And going against her during this challenge is so terrifying. She literally popped into my brain while I was sleeping and it was considered a nightmare. All right, all right. Welcome to the midpoint of the video. Recently, I've partnered with Card Trader, a trading card website that allows you to receive and sell your favorite trading cards with free shipping. Card Trader has Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, even Magic the Gathering. They also give you the ability to have a vault that keeps your collection of Pokemon cards in a safe distribution area on standby ready whenever you want to have them shipped to you or you can just instantly receive them it's up to you clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment will send you to a link to sign up where you'll receive free credits for any purchase you want to make if you're interested in getting into trading cards maybe even getting into a pokemon card collection you can even purchase sealed packs or just buy your favorite pokemon cards all right personally it's an awesome site that i've been able to enjoy and if you're enjoying the video so far why not subscribe oh and don't forget to hit that like button as you could probably see this video took ah, 40 hours to do so i would definitely appreciate it anyways now back to the video before we can take on the electric gym we have to go against the mona 
Huh, you ready for this shit? That dream was real, by the way. I was in that bitch. Oh hell no. She starts the battle with her rock run. I'm absolutely terrified of this thing, so I decided to rationalize into a normal type and utilize this move, Mud Shot. We're able to take it out in one hit, all thanks to Mr. Ice's modest nature. Pommy now comes out, and we're able to outspeed it and take it out with a Mud Shot. And finally, her Fire Croc comes out and terrestrializes into a Fire type. This Pokemon has the ability to destroy everybody on my team. We outspeed it and use Mud Shot, doing 40% of his HP as they. Oh, they just use Yawn. Nice. We're able to outspeed it the very next turn and take it out in one shot. What a high roll. Uh, just like that, we survived Nomona. That's not the last we've seen of her. We can't even reject her battles if we want to. You're damn right you can't. The game would be too, way too easy if you didn't have to go against me. Shut up. Anyways, it's time to take on the electric type gym leader. Iono has a team of very strong Pokemon. Water Oak comes out as we send out Mr. Ice. We outspeed it and use Icy Wind and crit it. I don't think it mattered, but we take it out in one hit. Next, Belly Bolt comes out. This thing is an absolute beast and is very, very bulky. I decided to just use Charm as they spark me and they paralyze me. Thanks. They start spamming Water Gun as we charm them again, trying to get their attack as low as possible. The next turn, we swap the fridge as they keep Water Gunning. Then I just spam Leer as they Water Gun me over and over again, trying to get their defense as low as possible. Because this Pokemon has the ability Electromorphia, which means if you hit it with anything, its electric type moves get boosted. I'm not playing that. I terrestrialize into a dragon type and use Dragon Tail. We're able to take it out in one shot as he takes me down to 25 HP, which kind of sucks, but I wasn't taking the chance. Luxio now comes out and he intimidates me. I decide to stay in, take the bite, almost die, and Dragon Tail them. But this was probably a mistake, and I probably should stop using Dragon Tail. Miss Magius comes out. I decide to swap into Mr. Ice as Miss Magius terrestrializes into an electric type and uses Hex on my Mr. Ice that had a status move on it. Oh my goodness, we survived though. Next, we swap to Sneeze, not getting any damage on this thing, but we use Foul Play on it, doing 25% on it as they confuse Raimi. The next turn, we're able to outspeed it and break through the confusion and crit it, taking it down to 10 HP. Although we outspeed this Miss Magius, we're confused. If we hit ourselves, we lose Sneeze. I took the chance, broke through the confusion, and used Foul Play to beat the Miss Magius. Luxio comes out, and we decide to use Big Snow, utilizing a Snow Warning, knowing that we'll have a physical boost as they use Spark. We're resistant to Electric, but the first Spark they use paralyzes me. That and the Luxio decides to use Bite. The first turn we get paralyzed. The next turn they use Bite and flinch me. The next turn they use Bite and we break through and we use Trailblaze. But we have to hit him one more time in order to win the battle. We can't swap into anyone. They use Bite taking me down to 7 HP but we manage to break through. The flinch hacks and the paralyze. Two use Trailblaze and take down the Luxio. Oh my goodness. Combination of most of my Pokemon being level 25 above the level cap, meaning we couldn't even use them. It is a miracle that we managed to take down Iono without losing a single Pokemon. That flinch hacks was so scummy at the end. We managed to get the badge though. <sighs> As you can see, Ice type Pokemon, they pack a punch all right, but it's really hard to utilize them all the time because they're just frail. We increase the level cap to level 27, and man, I hate the progression of this game. Next, we gotta go against the fire type team star base. I hate these things. This is gonna be one of the hardest challenges that we have to overcome. After destroying the Lechonk that was guarding the gate, we had to go against Mela. She sends out Torko as we send out Fridge. We immediately terrestrialize into a dragon type, being able to resist the flame will on Torko that comes out but because this Torco has drought it doesn't even matter we're able to resist the flame move that comes out and use our ability thermal exchange every time we get hit by a fire type move our attack goes up but it doesn't even matter the Torco uses clear smog the very next turn negating all of our attack boosts we're down half of our health and we gotta go against the star mobile we decide to get rid of that annoying sun by sending out big snow now all of my ice type pokemon on the field have a 50 percent physical boost the next turn, we swap to Mr. Ice and use Mud Shot. We're able to dodge the overheat that the Star Mobile does, but this Star Mobile has an annoying ability. Speed boost. This means the Star Mobile is faster than all of my team. The very next turn, we swap the fridge, knowing that we're resistant and we had a Citrus Berry. We eat it, and their special attack lowers the very next turn. 
we're able to utilize that thermal exchange and use a dragon tail, raising our attack, almost taking it out. But they keep on getting speed boosts. None of my Pokemon on the field are faster than this thing. The next turn, we're able to eat another thermal exchange, get knocked down to 13 HP as we use another boosted dragon tail to almost take it out. But now we're in a predicament. If we stay in with Fridge, it's gonna die. Switching to another Pokemon essentially means that the Star Mobile gets two turns to attack him. What do we do? We're definitely gonna lose a Pokemon here, but what Pokemon should we lose? I didn't know what to do here. I decided to swap into Sneeze as they use Blazing Torque and they burn me. Oh no, but luckily we have a Citrus Berry, which means we eat the Citrus Berry, then take the burn damage. Whew, we survive, but if we stay in now, we just die. What are we going to do? I swap the Big Snow, knowing that if we get hit, it's four times effective. Hoping that it used a physical move and we could utilize the Snow Warning, but Big Snow is four times weak to fire and we lose Big Snow. The very next turn, we decide to swap to Mr. Ice. They use Overheat and we dodge it. Holy smokes, we should have lost. We outspeed and use Mud Shot to beat the Star Mobile. Oh my goodness. We managed to get past the fire type star base, but we lost Big Snow in the process. We were definitely gonna lose a Pokemon going against this, and Big Snow was definitely going to be a big asset on our team that we just lost. <sighs> Despite this loss, we decided to push on. We raised the level cap to 28, and we decided to go back to the Snowy Mountains to get another Pokemon to replace Big Snow. We found a Crabrawler that was level 37, we managed to catch it. Then I found out that you needed an Ice Stone to evolve this. We couldn't even use it. Then I noticed this, here in Coronado, this guy wants to give us a Snom, which is a bug ice type Pokemon, just for a Flabebe. So I decided to go catch a Floet and trade him one. After completing this trade, we get a Snom. Name snows a lot. <laughs> it was a bashful nature, and ultimately, Snob is going to be able to turn into a Frostmoth, a very, very strong Pokemon. There's only one condition to evolving this. We have to take it out on dates. So, we go into the city, eat at fancy restaurants, and try our hardest to have a really good date with the Snob. Hey, um, I just wanted to say that you look very beautiful tonight, Snob. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of fun tonight. Would you consider having another date with me another time? <laughs> ah, just like that, it worked. All we had to do was score the second date on Snows a lot, and it evolves into Frostmoth. Look, all jokes aside, all we had to do is uh, raise his happiness, so we decided to just eat a bunch of food. And yet again, it's time to go against another Titan Pokemon that has the ability to destroy my whole entire team. We gotta go against the Alaskan Bullworm from SpongeBob. And if you watched that episode, so you know this thing is ferocious. We use Mr. Ice and immediately terrestrialize into a normal type and use Charm as it wraps me. So I decide to use Icy Wind to lower its speed since it's spamming Headbutt. Then I try to use Mud Shot and I forgot about its ability, Earth Eater, which means it's immune to ground type moves. Not only that, it heals it. This is very problematic. I try to get another attack off, but it just wasn't working. So knowing that Rap traps us inside of the battle, we decide to swap. We swap to Sneeze and oh my God, we almost died. Holy crap. I had no choice but to swap back to Mr. Ice, use Swift and spam Charm on it. Then I decided to swap the Snows a lot. He's able to eat his attack and we decide to use Infestation. Infestation is a bug type move, but it does chip damage every single turn. It uses wrap on me, forcing me to stay in here, but we decide to keep using Infestation. We get dropped down to nine HP and just like that, we lose Snows a lot. I couldn't even swap if I wanted to. This thing is so freaking strong. We almost take him down. We swap the fridge, but I was just in shock. I couldn't believe I spent all this time with Snows a lot, getting to know them, having deep conversations, eating good food with it, just for it to die in the first battle. I was angry. We decide to use Avalanche with Fridge, taking two Iron Tails, but ultimately taking down the Steel Titan, making it run away. Looking at our team, oh, it's sad. We almost lost everybody. And unfortunately, we have to put Snows a lot in the gone box, which is very sad. And I'm forced to go against the Steel Titan. I didn't know what to do, but I knew ha having Arvin on my team would give me a little bit of the advantage. And we decide to use Leer on the Steel Titan as Arvin supersonics it. The next turn, we decide to use Low Kick and holy crap, we almost kill it. And this is when I came to the realization, wow, I probably wouldn't have lost a single Pokemon if I decided to use Snowscape and 
use low kick on this twice. <sighs> so we kind of lost Snows a lot for no reason. That being said, we raised the level cap to 30 and we progress. Unfortunately, we've lost two Pokemon at this point. And I go to the Ice Mountains looking for another Pokemon we could use to replace our Snows a lot. I know it's really sad. During my way up the mountain, I found an Ice Stone on the ground. This is exactly what we needed in order to evolve our Pokemon Brawler that we got a little bit ago into a Crab Abominable, immediately replacing Snows a lot. This is an Ice Fighting type with some really good offensive moves. And on top of that, it's the final evolution, which means the stats is increased in a massive amount. While we're here, we decided to catch a Bergmite. And since the level cap has increased to 30, we don't have to breed any more Pokemon. We decided to name it Mighty. While we were still here, we decided to catch another Ice type Pokemon, Snow Run and name them Snowball. Planning to make this Pokemon a Lately, but it's level 37 right now, so we can't use it. After doing all that, we're able to take on Kofu. Kofu is not a pushover. So we start the battle with Sneeze, and we use Foul Play on the Veluza, doing super effective damage. For some reason, there's a Sandstorm, so the Sandstorm takes them out the same turn. Next, we decide to swap into Mighty and Curse. As Wug Trio comes out, it headbutts me, but doesn't do that much damage. We decide to use Recover, and they use Water Pulse, which negates all of my boosts. We decide to just use Bite, we take damage from the Sandstorm, and we're kind of forced to swap. So I decide to swap into Brawler. They use Water Pulse, and we eat it up. The next turn, Wug Trio uses Headbutt and flinches me, outspeeds me again, but we're able to break through and Brick Break them. Uh, for some reason I had Terrasilize Brawler, which means we just wasted our Terrasilization, which sucks. The next turn we decide to swap into Mr. Ice. As Kofu's Crab Abominable comes out, we decide to use Charm on Mr. Ice and outspeed the Crab Abominable, lowering its attack as it uses Rock Smash, lowering my defense, but it doesn't matter. We decide to swap into Fridge as we take a Rock Smash, lowering our defense and Dragon Tail. It outspeeds me as I use another Dragon Tail on it, and it gets another defense drop. The following turn I decide to use Bye. Oh gosh. We get outsped and die to a Rock Smash. I was thinking that we were faster than Crab Abominable, but because we were using Dragon Tail, we just had negative priority. But I miscalculated gravely and we lost Fridge. Fortunately, we we're able to use Sneeze, one of the fastest Pokemon in the game, to outspeed it and use a foul play to take it out. But unfortunately, we lost Fridge due to negligence. This is our third death in the run. We have to put Fridge into the gone box. This is a very sad moment. Beating Kofu raises the level cap to level 32. Fortunately, right after this, we're able to go to Puerto Marinada and use an Ultra Ball to catch Rotom. It's under the level cap, so we're able to use it, and we decide to name this Rotom Frish. But Duwaji, that's not an Ice-type Pokemon. How are you going to use that on your team? Well, well, well. I'm pretty sure you're very familiar with Rotom Forms. In this game, they give you the ability to win an auction to get the Rotom Catalog, which gives you the ability to change Rotom's forms. Isn't that freaking awesome? We're able to evolve Frish into its refrigerator form, which means it's an electric ice type with levitate. Don't get me wrong, no one can replace Frish, but Frish is definitely an awesome Pokemon to have. And you see, we do have some decent Pokemon on our team. Granted, they're not all in their full evolutions, but we can change that a little. First thing I decided to do is evolve Sneasel into Weavile. And finally, since we gathered up some money, we're able to buy some EV training items for all of our Pokemon. We decided to take this time to max out all of our Pokemon's EVs, mainly because we're gonna need all the EVs we could possibly get in order to take on the next Team Star base, the Poison type. Knowing this, I decided to clear the quest so I can put Earthquake on my Brawler, and fly to the bottom of the map so we can just beat up a bunch of baby Pokemon to increase our Eevees and beat up a couple little kids in the process. How do Eevee training items work? Every time you defeat a Pokemon, it doesn't matter what level it is, what Eevees it yields. If you're using these Eevee items, it gives you the maximum amount of Eevees you can get for defeating a Pokemon. Despite us only beating up a bunch of level 5s and 6s, we're getting the maximum amount of Eevee yields we can get. Pretty cool, right? Preparing our Pokemon as much as possible, we finally take on the Poison Team Star. Base. We decided to utilize some items in order to give our Pokemon the highest advantage we could get. We decided to put a Muscle Band on Brawler, a Never Melting Ice on Mr. Ice, Leftovers on Mighty, and a Magnet on Frish. We send out Brawler on their Stunk Tank and we immediately use Earthquake. They outspeed me and use Toxic. All thanks to our Muscle Band, we're able to take out the Stunk Tank in one turn with Earthquake. Reverum comes out and it's a Steel Poison type, which means they're four times weak to ground. Knowing that this is a Steel type, I Terrasilize into a Fighting type, eating their Iron 
using Earthquake the very next turn, and we're able to take them out. Now, we're down to 51 HP, and there's a Toxic out. Muck comes out, but we decide to swap into Sneeze, and we Leer them. Knowing that Muck has lower physical defense, we just utilize Foul Play, doing that two times to take them out. Sneeze is about to get knocked out, so this is when I decide to swap into Mighty as they spin out, which is super effective, which really sucks, but we're able to get Leftovers Recovery. The next turn, as they use Spin Out and lower their speed harshly, we decide to use Recover. The combination of Recover and Leftovers is making us stay in the game. Mighty is just really slow, so we just have to keep spamming Recover. We only have two Recovers left, but we decide to take another Spin Out and heal ourselves, gaining all the way to 58 HP. We're kind of backed up into a corner. We decide to use Curse. Mighty has a lot of defense. We're hoping that we survive and we do! With 2 HP, we're able to get the recover off, recovering 50% of our HP, recovering another 6%, and we decide to just use Avalanche. We're able to do 30% to them, but they have the ability Toxic Derbies, which puts spikes on our team. But we're able to get another Avalanche off, taking them down to 30%. They're almost taken out. We're able to swap into Frish, which is neutral against Steel. And since they have Levitate, we do not get hit by the spikes. We're able to outspeed it the very next turn with Thunderbolt and take it out. Just like that, we beat the Poison Team Starbase. Oh man. If I didn't strategize even just a little bit during that, we would have lost a Pokemon. So I'm realizing there's a lot of strategizing that is required for you to make sure that you don't lose a single Pokemon. We don't have unlimited Pokemon, so we have to make sure we're doing everything we can to keep these. Conquering a feat like that without losing a single Pokemon is a really good sign. Now the level cap has increased to level 36, as we have to go to Medali and take on the normal type gym leader, Larry. If you played this game, you know this guy is a beast. Yeah, he may look very normal, but his Pokemon pack a punch. We decide to start the battle with Brawler as Kamala comes out. We decide to Terrasilize into a fighting type and use Brick Break as the Kamala uses Yawn on you. We're able to take out the Kamala in one hit. <laughs> Dang, Brawler has good attack. Dun and Sparse comes out and glares me, which negates the Yawn, but paralyzes us ultimately. We're able to crit him and take him out in one hit. Now the Staraptor comes out. And they have Intimidate, but it doesn't matter because we have Hyper Cutter, which means our attack cannot get lowered. Staraptor terrestrializes into a normal type and outspeeds me with Aerial Ace, which is super effective, but we're able to take that and use Reversal to take out the Staraptor in one hit. And just like that, we beat Larry on our first attempt, not even switching Pokemon. Damn, what the hell did that do, Larry ass? Let's go, boys. We're finding our Strive. Oh my god. We have to go against Nomoto. Like I said, she's the hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke Ender. Although these battles are not required in the main game, they're required for us. Because if we lose a single battle, we lose the whole entire run. She starts the battle with Lycanroc. As we stay in with Brawler and just use Brick Break to one-shot her, Gumi comes out. And I decide to swap into Sneeze so we can use Home Claws. As they use Dragon Pulse on me, which doesn't do that much damage. They use Dragon Pulse again and crit me. Okay. And use Dragon Pulse again and takes me down to 21. But Pomo comes out next. So all that boosting was for nothing. We swap into Brawler and we're able to outspeed the Palma with the Earthquake. Now Skelly Ridge comes out. Hey, you think this shit is over? <laughs> I'm about to switch your whole team now! The Mono terrestrializes into a Fire type, which is very detrimental to my team. I terrestrialize into a Fighting type and she uses Torch Song. We survive and we use Earthquake, but we do not take it out. Torch Song raises their special attack, which means I can't even swap into a Pokemon. Mainly because she's using a fire type Pokemon. That's Terrasilize. Anybody who swaps into this is gonna die. So, looks like I had to come to the conclusion of sacking Brawler. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I sat here in the menu contemplating what I could possibly do to not lose Brawler or any Pokemon. But like I said, Nimona is a freaking beast. She just does too much damage. So we let Brawler go down, unfortunately. But the very next turn, we're able to swap to Frisch and use Thunderbolt to take out the Skelly Ridge. Winning the battle, but losing Brawler in the process. Mighty evolves into an Avalug, but now we have to put Brawler in the Gone Box. Brawler, we only had the ability to do two battles with you, and you were a huge asset to our team, especially winning the last gym badge. Without you, it would have been hell. I thank you for your contribution. It's very sad. We spend a lot of time together. Ugh, we made a lot of strives. Unfortunately, we lost some, some of our Pokemon that we love, but I definitely think we deserve a break. Let's lie down. What? No, no, not me having a nightmare again. What is this? Is this Penny? What? What is Penny doing in my dream? Uh -huh. You have no idea, but you're gonna have to face me and something really bad is gonna happen. 
What? What are you talking about? Why are you in my nightmare? Oh, you'll see. In due time, Duwaji. In due time. <sighs> oh, oh my gosh. What is up with me having these nightmares? Now the level cap has increased to level 42, which means we can use Snowball. But it kind of sucks because Crabmobitable was one of the best Pokemon we could have at the stage, especially considering that a lot of my Pokemon terrestrialization forms are ice, which doesn't really help me. Him having a fighting type terrestrialization gave me the ability to take moves I couldn't normally take. But it's time to EV train and level up all of our Pokemon to around the level cap. Eating ham sandwiches, battling chances, to accelerate the process a little bit. While coming back, I accidentally encountered a Sunflora. And it has double edge, what the heck? Oh my god, Snowball almost dies! Oh, oh my goodness! I was tempted to just hit run, but I knew Snow Run is very slow, so I decided to use a Poke Doll to get out of this encounter. Oh my goodness, we almost lost Snowball while training it. Exactly at level 42, Snowball evolves into Glalie, and they have a plus special attack nature. Unfortunately, they have a minus speed nature. Now we gotta go against a Ghost Gym. We decide to send out Sneeze and Mr. Ice. Bayonet tries to use Sucker Punch as we immediately Snow Skate. We use Foul Play to take out the Bayonet, and we get slashed by Mimikyu. Taking out the Bayonet gives our Pokemon a boost on all of their offensive stats. In the very next turn, we able to foul play the Houndstone and use Icy Wind, breaking the disguise on Mimikyu and lowering its speed in the process. We use foul play on the Toxtricity, almost taking it out as it uses Discharge and Mr. Ice is able to dodge it. We almost go down to it, but the very next turn we're able to use Icy Wind and take out both of the Pokemon on the field, winning us the Gym Dash. And our team was coming together. We were able to utilize a lot of the Ice type Pokemon that were in the Ice Mountains. A lot of them. And if worse came to worse, we had a lot more to get. So things were looking up. You know, if Doomsday was to happen and all of my Ice type Pokemon died. But before leaving the icy mountains again, we decided to catch a beer tick and name them Float. Oh, and say hi to Frivol. That's the frost last we caught earlier. The level cap is now level 44, and we're forced to go against the Earth Titan. In Pokemon Violet, this Titan is Iron Threads, a Steel type Pokemon. I decided to utilize Rotom's Electric Terrestrialization to terrestrialize into an Electric type and use Blizzard, taking it out in one shot. All thanks to the Never Melting Ice we decided to put on him. For the second round, we decided to do the same thing and take it out in one hit hit with Arvin using a fire thing, taking it out. In the progression of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we're forced to go to Alphernada, so we can take on the Psychic Gym. I didn't even know you can get to this location without climbing. Going through this cave gives you access to Alphernada without even climbing anything, so that's good to know. I'm only saying that if you didn't know that. Before we take on the Psychic Gym Leader, we have to go against the Mona again. <laughs> you ready to do this shit, Dewaji? No, Mona, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me, man. You, you killed Brawler. You killed Brawler. You're the reason that Brawler's in the box right now. We're not friends. I decided to terrestrialize into an electric type with Frisch and use a Thunderbolt to take out the Black and Rock. Sligo comes out, and I know this is special defensive, so I decided to use Volt Switch and swap into Float. We're able to take two Dragon Pulses and use an Icicle Crash to take it down in one hit. Palmet comes out. We decide to swap into Mighty, knowing that this is a physical beast. It barely does any damage, and it sparks me. I'm able to use Avalanche to take it out in one hit. Now Skelly Ridge comes out. This is when I decided to swap back to Rotom and use a Magnet to rationalize Boosted Thunderbolt to outspeed a Skelly Ridge and take it down to 80%. It uses Torch Song, but Rotom survives on 2 HP. We could have lost Rotom there. Holy smokes. Luckily, we're able to take out the Skelly Ridge and we survive another day without Nimona destroying one of her Pokemon. <laughs> Why are you so salty? It's just one. You're acting like I destroyed your whole team. Nimona, we wouldn't even be talking right now if you did. I probably would have quit this video. Before we take on the Psyche Gym, we're gonna have to do Simon Says. We have to play this game, do it perfectly, and then battle Pokemon. Using Sneeze, this is gonna be a breeze. We're able to absolutely destroy most of these, but what the? Oh God. We have to go against a Medicham, which has fighting type. All of my Pokemon are weak to fighting type. To add insult to injury, Sneeze doesn't have that much defense and is four times weak to fighting. Uh, we have to sack Snowball. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, Snowball. I'm so sorry. The next turn, we're able to take out Medicham with a freeze dry. But yes, you guys saw that correctly. We lost Snowball. Before we even started the gym battle too, are you serious? Now we gotta go against Tulip, the psychic type gym leader. We decide to use Sneeze on their fat net giraffe Pokemon and we decide to use Home Claws. The first turn, they decide to reflect, which means I do half damage. I decided to use this time to eat their crunch. Oh, did I get a defense drop though? 
and just use Hone Claws. It doesn't do that much damage, but I decided to use another Hone Claw and start using Beat Up. Beat Up is a move that hits as much as the amount of Pokemon on your team. So we're able to take out the Giraffe in a couple hits and Gardevoir comes out. Dark is neutral to Gardevoir because it's a Fairy type. The Reflect is still up, but I decided to take the chance and use Beat Up. Hit it once, twice, three, four, and we take it out in five. That was a high roll on the last one. Whew. But now the Reflect wears off. Asparta uses Quick Attack. Ooh, we survive it and we take out the Asparta in two hits. As Floor just comes out and terrestrializes into a Psychic type, they meet the same fate. Beating the Psychic type Gym Leader, not losing a single Pokemon, raising the level cap to 48. Fortunately, our Glalie died without even getting any action, really. I was thinking this was going to be a Pokemon that we could utilize. We spent so much time training him just for him to go down to a high jump kick. It was nice having you on our team while it lasted Glalie. Fortunately, we can use Frost last to replace you. And I feel so bad because if I was just a little bit more diligent and use Frost last on my team, anticipating for that Metacham to use high jump kick, we could have avoided that easily. But I just used the wrong Pokemon. Rest in peace. <sighs> We're almost done with the video. I hate going home to go to sleep but we need our rest. Every time we gone home and gone to sleep, we have a freaking horrible nightmare. But I'm exhausted. We have to go to sleep. What? Is that Arvin? What are those Pokemon he's going against? Those things look strong as fuck. Luaji, you're hella strong. Join me. Let's take over the world. Ah! What the hell? Bro, you know what? I'm not going to sleep anymore. I'm not going to sleep for the rest of the video. You got me fucked up. We make it to the final gym, and it's an ice showdown. Hey, Lil Do, you use ice type Pokemon too? What? You're a man? Oh my god, Duwaji, don't do this again. You did this shit four times in a row in every single video, and you're gonna do it again? Oh, hell no. I'm gonna beat your ass and make sure you have to reset this whole entire run, wasting the last 20 hours you spent just to get here. Yes, we gotta go against Grusha. We immediately terrestrialize into an electric type and use Thunderbolt with our Rota. We still have the magnet on, so we get a 20% boost on our special attack. We're able to take down the Frost Moth in one hit. Let's just be thankful that it doesn't have ice skills. Spirit Tick comes out, we take an Icicle Crash, but we're able to take it out the very next turn. Setian comes out, and this thing is a big bulky beast. We decide to use Thunderbolt, take it down to red HP as they use Ice Spinner. Oh, we're not an Ice type anymore. So that does neutral damage, almost taking us out, but we're able to outspeed it and use Volt Switch the very next turn and swap into Sneeze. While the Altaria comes out. Don't, Don't think this shit, shit over, little dude. dude. <laughs> I got my ice steel. Ice. Why do you sound like that? They terrestrialize their Altaria into an ice type as we use Brick Break. Doing 50% of their... <gasps> they hit Moonbass, but we are special defensive. Woo! We're able to outspeed it the very next turn and take it out with a Brick Break. Winning the gym bag. Just like that, we gathered all eight of the gym badges, but we're doing the whole entire game. And I really have to say, I'm really, really thankful for Weavile being specially defensive enough to take that moon blast, because that could have been a catastrophe. So I have to give a slight moment of silence to Weavile. Just in general, it's good to get some more Pokemon, so we decided to encounter this Cloyster. It's level 55, so we can't use it at the moment, but. If you're familiar with Cloyster's abilities, it having skill link gives us the ability to do a lot. The level cap is raised to 50, and I definitely felt like we needed some more Pokemon to utilize to be able to pivot. One Pokemon in particular that I knew was going to be a huge asset to our team for the end of the game that we couldn't get until now is Ice Cube. We catch them and decide to name them QB. QB has the ability Ice Face, which means any physical attack for one turn acts as a substitute. Fortunately, you can still get hit by special attacking. That being said, now it's time to take on Ortega, the fairy type, team start base owner. We immediately start off with QB and use Snowskin, as the Azumarill uses Charm on me. QB has a Roar Bell, which acts as a double screen, which means my whole entire team takes half damage. Azumarill uses Bounce and paralyzes me, which kind of sucks, but it it doesn't really matter because once QB loses his ice face, it becomes one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. Despite us being paralyzed, we're able to outspeed the Azumarill and take it out with a freeze dry. To be fair, Azumarill's very slow. The snow goes away, but we swap to Mighty as Wigglytuff comes out. We're able to swap back to Mr. Ice and get the snowscape up so we can get some more physical bulk and take out Wigglytuff with a Blizzard. His next Pokemon comes out, we just use Blizzard two times to take it out. Now, finally, the Star Mobile comes out and it has Steel Roller. Thankfully for the snow still being up, we're able to resist it and take its move 
and use Blizzard on it. The next turn, we decide to swap into Mighty, eat his attack while we get our leftovers, decide to spam Avalanche, slowly chipping it down and destroying the Starmobile, defeating Ortega. We're reaching the end of the game and we have to defeat the final Titan. And we're able to defeat it with ease, just utilizing Ice Q's Freeze Dry and Ice Face. But this next part of the game was going to be very, very hard. We gotta go against the fighting type Starbase. Like I said before, these Starbases are no joke. But we immediately swap the QB and use Snowscape. The next turn, Toxicroak uses Poison Jab as we get our Aurora Veil up. This is when we decided to swap the Fribble, as Toxicroak uses Brick Break, but it doesn't affect me. The next turn, we're able to take a Sucker Punch and use Psychic, taking the Toxicroak out the very next turn. Lucario comes out. And I know this Lucario is a special attacker, so I decide to stay in. We get knocked down to three HP, people we're able to outspeed the Lucario the very next turn and take it out. Annihilate comes out, and this thing is going to be a big threat. I decide to swap into Mighty, and I immediately decide to Rasalize into an Ice type and use Avalanche as they close combat and it barely does any damage. We're able to Avalanche and take it out in one hit. Ooh. Thank God for Mighty being a physical defensive beast. Passyman comes out and uses close combat. We're able to eat that, but take it out the very next turn. The Star Mobile comes out and shift gears immediately. I decide to use Avalanche thinking that it was going to attack me, but it has stamina. This is when I decided to switch my strategy completely. Aurora Vil wears off and we decide to immediately curse as they keep shift gearing for some reason. The next turn, they decide to use a combat torque and we survive with 26 HP and recover immediately. And I took my chances and cursed the very next turn and they used shift gear again. This kept going on and on and on. Eventually we got knocked down to 18 HP, but we're able to recover that immediately. Fortunately, we take a combat torque and they paralyze me with only 67 HP remaining. The next turn they decide to use shift gear and we get extremely lucky. We recover, take a combat torque again and avalanche them down the fighting team star base without losing a single Pokemon. Everything had to go right for that to happen. And I'm definitely grateful. At this point, the level cap is raised to 61, and we gotta start going against the in game battles. But since our level cap is level 61, you see him in a thumbnail, we're going to go get a legendary Pokemon. Lifting all of these stakes gives us the ability to encounter Chimpao or Shimpo. I don't know which one it is. We immediately start the battle, use a quick ball, but it doesn't work. This guy's Pokemon ability drops our physical defense by 50% just off rip. We're able to utilize QB's Ice Face to take an Icicle Crash and Snowscape the very next turn, giving us another Ice Face and raising our defense 50%. The next turn, they use Sacred Sword, breaking our Ice Face again as we Aurora Veil, having their attack even more. I immediately decided to throw Ultra Ball at it, but it doesn't work. So we decide to swap the Mighty, because Mighty has a lot of defense. And this is a physical attacker. We wasted as many turns as we possibly can, and decided to keep throwing timer balls at it. Eventually, we caught it, and aimed our new legendary Pokemon on our team, Power. This thing is an absolute beast. Now it's time to take on the Elite Four, with all of our Ice-type Pokemon. At this point in time, we've lost five Pokemon, and I hope not to increase that. And we decided to put a light clay on a QB, a never melting ice on Mr. Ice, a magnet on a Frish, a muscle band on Power, a white herb on Koi, and leftovers on Mighty. All of these items were going to give us the advantage we needed in order to win. We immediately start the battle with QB and we use Snowscape, increasing our defense and the next turn putting our Aurora Villa. We're able to freeze dry the Wish Cash, taking it out one hit. Next camera up comes out, we decide to swap into Mighty as they fire blast, but we dodge it and we earthquake it to take it out. Now Dolphin comes out and I know this has rock type moves, so I terrestrialize into a dark type and use Ice Spinner on Dolphin, anticipating it to use a sturdy ability if we did knock it down there. We take the Stone Edge and we take down the Dolphin. Doug Trio comes out and Power is a speedy beast, outspeeding the Doug Trio taking it out in one hit. Clodsire comes out and terrestrializes into a ground type and we outspeed it in one shot, taking down the first member. Next, we gotta go against one of the biggest problems in the Elite Four and the most concerning battle we're gonna have to deal with the steel type elite four member. We immediately use shell smash on the copper Raja, knowing that we're neutral to steel type moves and utilizing our white herb, getting rid of all of our negative defects. We take the heavy slam and we immediately terrestrialize into a water type 
and Waterfall the Copperaja taking it out in one hit. Magnezone comes out now. I was really thinking about switching, but I just said fuck it. I know this Magnezone has sturdy, but I had to take the chance of flinch. I use Waterfall and they decide to use Light Screen for some reason. I'm able to outspeed it the very next turn and take out the Magnezone. I'm glad I didn't switch. Carvernite comes out and we use Ice School Spear. And we land it. Skill Link makes it so guaranteed to get five hits. Bronzong comes out and we take it out with one hit with Waterfall. And Tinkaton finally comes out and terrestrializes into a steel type. And we're able to outspeed it with a waterfall and take it out just like that. It's not over yet. Now we gotta go against flying types. We send out power and immediately ice spinner on the Tropius. Staraptor comes out. I know the Staraptor has close combat. We're four times weak to fighting, so I decide to swap into QB. We take the close combat without taking damage because of Ice Face, and we outspeed it the very next turn because of Ice Face. Knowing that, I terrestrialize into an Ice type and use Freeze Drive to take down the Staraptor in one hit. Altaria now comes out. I decide to use Snowscape knowing that I was faster, I was gonna get my Ice Face back. But his Flamethrower, I forgot about that. We're able to get the Aurora Veil up the very next turn and use Freeze Drive to take out the Altaria. Oricorio comes out. Not wanting to take any more damage, I decide to swap back the power. But they use Teeter Dance on me. That's annoying. But we break through the confusion and beat Oricorio. Flamingo comes out. And this Flamingo has close combat because it's originally a fighting type. I knew it's only a physical attacking Pokemon, so I decide to swap into Isecute. As it terrestrializes into a flying type, and uses close combat on me. Like I said before, knowing that we're one of the fastest Pokemon in the game with the Ice Face off, I decide to use Freeze Dry to outspeed a Flamingo and take it out in one hit. QB is really coming in clutch. I'm glad we got this Pokemon. Next, we gotta go against all Dragon type. We use Power and immediately Ice Spinner to take out Noivern in one hit. Haxorus comes out and I Ice Spinner again. Because Power's ability is freaking overpowered. Fortunately, we level up Power past the level cap, so we can't use them anymore. So we're forced to swap in QB. We take a Sludge Bomb and a Roar Veil. We almost get knocked out. Thankfully, they did not crit. We swap to Mr. Ice, the reliable trainer. Yes, he is a mark on him. And we immediately Blizzard. Flapo comes out, and Flapo's faster than me, but we dodge the Leech Seed and take out Flapo. And finally, Baxcalibur comes out. Glaceon is not that fast. Baxcalibur outspeeds us and uses Brick Break. Getting rid of my Auroraville, and we miss the Blizzard. This puts my whole entire team into danger. I had no choice but to swap into Mighty, knowing that his physical defense is really high. They use Glaive Rush and we're able to take 80 HP points. Woo. The next turn, we take another Glaive Rush. Take us down to 30 HP. Oh my goodness, if he got a high roll, we would have died. We managed to Avalanche to take out the Bax Caliber, managing to beat all four of the members without losing a single Pokemon. This challenge is nowhere near done. If we lose a Pokemon, it really puts us in a disadvantage. We have tons of battles left, as you could probably see in the duration of the video. If anything, we can't afford to lose any Pokemon. We gotta go against the champion next. We send out power and immediately use the Night Slash to take out Esparta. Now Avalug comes out. This is the big threat, mainly because this has body press. I'm forced to swap into QB to take the body press, and I accidentally use Amnesia on QB. Oh my goodness, taking the body press head on, almost taking me out. But the next turn, we're able to use Snowscape, increasing her defense, getting her ice face back, but losing it. We had no choice but to switch to our own Avalug, but they decided to use Earthquake for some reason. We immediately use Curse, trying to get our attack and defense as high as possible, as they decide to use Avalanche. It's very weird. I'm not complaining though. We're able to get another curse up as they body press and it doesn't do that much damage, mainly because Snowscape's up. I know this also, so I'm utilizing all the turns to get as many curses up as possible until the snow runs out. To the point where his body press barely does any damage at all, but if he crits me at any point, we can lose Mighty. Knowing this, I use Recover. Maxing out my attack and defense even further, finally using Earthquake to take the Avala down to half. Finishing it off the very next turn, King Gambit comes out. And I know this is a physical attacker, so I decide to use Earthquake as a Stone Edge. If that crit, we would have been in trouble, but it didn't. Go Go comes out, and we use Avalanche as a Horn Leech, taking them out in one hit. Veluza comes out, Psycho cuts me, we eat it, and Earthquake them, and finally, Glamora comes out and terrestrializes into a Rock type, and uses Sludge Wave. Luckily, we had enough HP to tank it, Whew. and take out Glamora. Whew. Just like that, we beat the whole entire Elite Four without losing a single Mon. <sighs> It's not over yet though, we're almost done with the video, but we have to finish the rest of the roads. First, we gotta go against the director. We try sweeping with our Weavile, but his psychic monkey has foul play and he was abusing that. 
He almost takes out my Weavile. Eventually, we just swapped the Koi and we decided to Shell Smash. Taking out his Psychic Monkey in one turn, outspeeding and taking out his Obama Snow with Rock Blast, outspeeding and taking out his Gyarados with Rock Blast, Terrasalizing into a Water type, taking out his Hound Doom with the Waterfall, and finally Meow Scarta comes out. Knowing that I'm not an Ice type anymore, I was fearing. I swap into QB and took a Flower Trick, destroying my Ice Base, but making me faster than the Meow Scarta. I decided to use Auroraville, but this was a big mistake because Flower Trick crits every single turn, which means it negates our Auroraville being up. And they're using a Terrasilize boosted Flower Trick. Our answer to that was to swap the Mighty, take all the damage, and finish off the Meowskarta without losing a single Pokemon. Yes, the order's very weird, but now we have to go against Arvin. Arvin has some decent Pokemon. Hey, Duwaji, my dad left a message for me. He did it in video form. I never found this video, but, but it says, watch this if you find it. Let's see what he said. Hey, yo, uh, is this thing on? Okay, Arvin. I don't give a fuck about you, and I want you out of my life. So much that I built a time machine, and I'm living in the future, because I want to get the fuck away from you. Don't even try to find me, but whatever you do, do not go to Area Zero. I'm definitely not in that bitch. You will not find me there. Trust me, I'm not there. Damn, Arvin, it sounds like we gotta go to Area Zero. My dad said not to go down there, though. Nah, I, I definitely think he needs you to go down there. Let's go down there. Okay, after this Pokemon battle. Yes, the Nuzlocke is not over. We could lose even here. We immediately start with Koi and Shell Smash. As they body so- Oh my goodness, they paralyze me, which means I'm very slow. We take them out in one hit as their Toad's Cool comes out. They Earth Power- Oh my god! We only have 3 HP. We survive, but we land the Icicle Crash and take them out in one hit. Next, their Rock Pokemon comes out and we swap the QB. Take their attack, put the snow up, get our Ice Face up, and Auroraville immediately. Knowing that this was a rock type Pokemon, I decided to swap to Mighty immediately. Unfortunately, they put rocks up, so we take 25% of our HP. They Stone Edge and we curse immediately while the snow is up and the Aurora Bill is up. The next turn, we take a Stone Edge, don't get crit, fortunately, and we Earthquake them. Next turn, they Body Press and we don't get crit and we take them out. Nice. It's not over yet. We got three more turns of our Aurora Bill left, but this is a special attacker. We decide to stay in and Earthquake. As a Fire Blast almost takes me out, but we take them down to one HP. Come on man the next turn they fire blast but we managed to survive and we terrestrialize into an electric type and outspeed them using thunderbolt to take them out roarville wears off and they send out cloister we outspeed the cloister and take that out in one hit and finally their dog comes out we use thunderbolt as they terrestrialize into a dark type and oh my gosh they outspeed me and use crunch taking out fridge oh my goodness fridge <laughs> I thought, I thought you were, you were faster, faster than this stupid, stupid ass, ass dog. dog. Are you kidding me? Unfortunately, Frisch is not faster than this stupid ass dog. I don't know how, but it is faster than me. So we lost Frisch. One of the best Pokemon we've had on our team. I know damn well you're not faster than Power. You can't be. And our ability makes your defense 50% less. So we're able to one-shot it with a Sacred Sword. But unfortunately, we lost Frisch. A Pokemon that has held it down since the beginning. We finish off the Path of Legends while we finish off our battle relationship with Frisch. We have to put them in the Gone Box. As you can see, we have Big Snow. Snow's a lot. Fridge. Brawler. Snowball and now Frisch in the box. On a bright side, we have three Pokemon in the box that we can use to pull out at any time. And that's Frivol, Float, and Sneeze. Now we have to beat Penny and Nimona. First, we gotta go against Penny. We start with QB as they use Umbreon, and we immediately Snowscape. Then we get the Aurora Bill up, as they Dark Pulse me twice. We then decide to swap the Koi. They don't have that good of special defense. We're able to Shell Smash, and this is when I just came, oh, post commentary, I just realized. Them using Baby Doll Eyes just got rid of my White Herb. Which which means we're minus special defense and defense. At the time of recording, I had no idea, but I decided to stay in and take out the Umbreon. Then we Waterfall, take out the Jolteon, and Leafeon. Flareon comes out. We decide to use Waterfall to take that out as Vaporeon comes out. And we use Rock Blast as they use Baby Doll Eyes, a priority move to drop our attack. We take them out, and finally Sylveon comes out. And Penny terrestrializes into a Fairy type. We use Waterfall, and they survive on 1 HP as they use Shadow Ball and kill Koi. There's a chance that we would have survived if we used our White Herb on our Shell Smash, but that made it so we lost Koi. The very next turn, Power is able to outspeed Sylveon and take it out, but just like that, we lost Koi. We still have one more person to go against that has some very threatening Pokemon. Ugh. Can we even do it at this point? We finish off the Starfall path, and it's time to take on Nimona. 
Hi, you ready for this shit, Luwaji? I don't give a fuck if I in your run. <laughs> like I said in the shiny pink Pokemon video, if you did a hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke, you would definitely lose. And that's why we didn't do that shit. <laughs> Okay, now you're just taunting me. We have to beat Nimona without losing a single Pokemon. She immediately uses Stealth Rock, which means all of my Pokemon that comes out from now on is gonna take 25%. We use Snowscape and get the Aurora Bill up. We decide to use Surf, taking half of their HP as they use Stone Edge and thankfully do not get a crit. If they did, we would have died. But we take them down. Palma comes out and we decide to swap the Fribble, knowing that this Pokemon had close combat. We decide to use Draining Kiss, doing half of their HP, gaining our HP back as they use a double shot, and we're able to eat their move. The very next turn, we're able to outspeed them and take out the Pummel. Earthworm comes out. I hate this thing. It killed Snows a lot. We take out Iron Tail, but we're able to eat a Citrus Berry. Holy smokes. And bulk up. Knowing that we will take the next attack, we eat the Iron Tail that comes out and we superpower. Next, Dendon Sparse comes out, and we decide to swap into power. We take 25% of our HP when we swap in, and we immediately decide to use Sword Stance. They use Hyper Drill, and we survive it. Aurora Veil wears off, so we have to go all in. We use Sacred Sword and take out the Dunsparce. Gudra comes out, and we know Gudra doesn't have that much defense, so we take it out with an Ice Spin. And finally, Skelly Ridge comes out. We decide to stay in, and we immediately Terrasilize into a Dark type and use Night Slash. As Namona Terrasilizes into a Fire type, but we outspeed it and use Night Slash to take it out in one hit. Wow! Damn, Duwaji, you actually did it! What the fuck? I didn't even think you had the ability to actually beat a hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke and make it this far! I really thought you were gonna fucking lose! Your ass! Just like that, we beat most of the game, but we have one more part of the game to go again. Alright, Arvin, are you ready to go to Area Zeros? Yeah, I, I don't even know why you wanted us to come down here. Well, I mean, your dad told us to. Uh, I'm pretty sure he said, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So we make it to Era Zero. And while we're here, we encounter Iron Bundles. You already know, I had to catch this thing. And we make it all the way down to Area Zero. All we have to do is press this button, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to see Arvin's dad. Intruder alert, intruder alert. Sun DNA detected, sun DNA detected, sun DNA detected. What the hell? What is up with, whoa, whoa! What is up with these mechanical Pokemon trying to beat us up? What the heck are we gonna do? And what are they saying? Sun DNA detected. Sun DNA detected. Sun DNA detected. Whatever, we're able to take down all of these iron Pokemon with our pure steel. Sun DNA detected. We must beat his ass. Whoa, Arvin, this is what I saw earlier. What? What are you talking about? I had a dream about this. Oh my god. <gasps> that means the other part of my dream of me ruling the world. Is that gonna come true? Anyways, we make it to this laboratory. And no, Arvin Dad's actually here. What the? Who the hell are you? Are you Arvin's dad? What the fuck? How do you know that? Uh, you made a video. Oh my god, I told that dumbass not to come here. He brought you here? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh hell, hell no. no. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm go, gonna go back to the future, future and make sure, sure I, I never, never see that, that motherfucker, motherfucker again. No, 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 no. Arvin's dead. Look, look, look. You have to take responsibility. Arvin has been wanting to see you for years. You just left him. Exactly. exactly. I don't I want, want that, that motherfucker, motherfucker in my, my life. life. You're gonna you have to beat, beat me. me. Oh my gosh. Okay, whoa. It looks like we have to beat Arvin's dad. <laughs> Who would have thought this would have happened? And he has all mechanical Pokemon. Holy shit. So we immediately start the battle with Pure Steel and we surf on Iron Moths. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, they one shot me with Fiery Dance. Holy smokes. Okay, rip the pure steel. You don't want to lose any more Pokemon. The next turn, we're able to swap the power, and power's able to outspeed it and take it out with one hit. Iron Hands comes out next. Swap the QB, knowing that this was only a physical attacker, but they fake out and flinch me. Fortunately, we're super fast, so we're able to snowscape and get our defense up. The next turn, we use Auroraville as they drain punch. It does not do that much damage. The next turn, we're able to freeze dry them, and oh, that really mattered. We froze them. We're able to swap the Frivol and use Psychic. They survive one more hit, but they're still frozen. The snow stops, and we take them down. Nice. Iron Thorns now comes out, and they immediately brick break me. Fortunately, we're able to use a four times effective Earthquake on them to take them out. But now our Auroraville is off. We use Flamethrower, but we're able to Avalanche to take them out. Woo! We almost lost Mighty there. Iron Bundle comes out, we decide to use Recover. Oh. 
we lose Mighty. Oh my goodness. This sucks. I can't believe we lost them. We swapped the power and we used Sacred Sword to take to take out the Iron Bundles. Finally, Iron Valiant comes out. They use Quark Drive and their attack is heightened. I know power is faster than this, but I don't know if we have enough power to take it out. I had no choice but the Ice Spinner and oh, we don't take it out. And just like that, we lose power too. Oh my gosh. We only have three Pokemon remaining. I know QB without his ice face is faster than Iron Valley. So I use Freeze Dry to take out the Iron Valley. Damn, Dewaji, you're strong as fuck. Look, I'll make a proposal to you. How about you join me and we rule the world? Wait, Wait Dad, Dad, is that, is that you? you? Oh, not this fucker. Dad, Dad I've, been I've been looking for you all, all my life. life. Oh, hell no. Nah. You know what? I anticipated this to happen. Sun DNA, Sun DNA detected. detected. Sun, Sun DNA, DNA detected. detected. Initializing self-destruct. Initializing self-destruct. Initializing self-destruct. Self what the hell? What's happening? You see, I anticipated you to do this. If you did so happen to come down here, I set this machine to detect your DNA and explode if you come in this bitch. So ultimately, you're going to fucking die. Oh my god, your dad is freaking crazy. And on top of that, I made it so you can't even send your Pokemon out to stop me. <laughs> it's over for you, son. I'm not taking no responsibility, and I don't give a fuck. I'm the only one who can send Pokemon on in this bitch. Okay, well, we gotta go against his dad again, and we can't use any Pokemon, so let's just run. Up oh, and... It doesn't let us, but we can swap into Maridon, and you already know this battle is pretty much plot. I mean, I get knocked down to one HP, but we don't die for some reason. And the very next turn we outspeed it, gets a freaking boost. Ah, we finished the whole entire video. And unfortunately, we have to box all the Pokemon we lost. We lost 10 Pokemon. Big Snow, Snow's a lot. Fridge, Brawler, Snowball, Frish, Koi, Pure Steel, Mighty, and Power. Fortunately, we were able to keep Mr. Ice, QB, and Frivol. And it was an honor to present you guys my first hardcore Pokemon Nuzlocke. I would definitely do a lot more. This was a lot of fun and required a lot of strategy to do. So I appreciate you guys tuning in this long. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I post videos just like this every week. So make sure to hit that post notification bell if you enjoyed the video. Like I said, shiny video next week, and that's it. Thank you for watching.